So what are your thoughts about uh, Enscape versus uh, Twin Motion? And maybe I've heard uh, more and more about its uh, D7 renders. I think they're based in China. So what do you think about all, all these tools? Uh, D, D5, D5 or D7 D5. rendering? What's the one? Uh, D5. Yeah. D5. Oh, D5, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I, a lot of people ask me this, and um, especially because if you watch if you watch the the two the two uh, architecture series I have, the Modern Kitchen and the Modern Barn. Uh, in the Modern Kitchen, I'm using Enscape, and the Modern Barn, I'm using Twin Motion for the visualization side of it. Um, and the truth is, um, it's actually my, I should say my answer is changing a little bit now. But the truth is, I think they both exist for for, and they both can exist, and there's no reason why you shouldn't use them both. Um, one thing Enscape has always been really good at is um, just out of the box looking incredibly good on a visual front um, as long as you're applying textures and materials in Revit um, as well as with interiors it's always been phenomenal um, and VR has also been an area where Enscape was always um, uh, just as far as uh, removing the roadblocks to usage like if you know how to set up a rendering in Revit you can set up VR in Enscape right and so that that's always been huge and so um, you know that's a piece of it um, until recently with the in, with, with the addition of path tracer and lumen um, I would say that um, if you were doing interiors you pretty much had to use Enscape because twin motion just didn't have the 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 global illumination the reflect it just it just there was too much work to try and make twin motion look this that realistic on the interiors with lumen and with path tracer um, in both of them to be honest um, have kind of changed that a little bit you can start getting interiors that are looking very similar so then the, then the only difference between them at this point in time um is 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 the real-time connection uh, which is that live sync so twin motion has it it's not nearly as clean as enscape um and then um it's also the the libraries right so you know i know people are making custom objects for enscape but i know that the process is not easy for you doing that <laughs> and so uh um you know the the between vegetation, um, you know, organic materials, the all sorts of stuff. Um, there's just an enormous amount of content uh, outside of your building and inside your building, you know, entourage and so on that you can that you have access to using Twin Motion. Whether it's the Quixel Mega Scan, Mega Scans library, which is built right in. Now they have Sketchfab built right in, or the fact that you can bring in FBX, OBJ, you know, you name it down, you know, down the list. Now even animated objects. Um, you have an endless supply of basically content that you can place in it. Um, so I guess the, the, my answer now is basically Twin Motion is free now if you have a Revit license. Um, so just whatever money you're saving on that, just buy Enscape, and then it's and and then so you don't have to make even make a decision between the two. Right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of that's kind of where I've landed. I definitely use Twin Motion more on a daily basis, but I'm also doing a lot more large scale exterior renderings where we have tons of context, tons of um, vegetation, all that stuff where it just doesn't make much sense to use Enscape. However, whenever I'm doing, uh, whenever I'm designing in, in Revit, um, I'm ha I have Enscape in open in like white mode on the side all the time. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, they're both valuable to me. Um, uh, even when I'm using twin motion, it's just because of that real time connection and live sync is just not, as smooth as I want it to be yet. Um, and, and I'm always I'm using it, you know, I'm using the import function a little differently in the sense that there's always design options, there's always phasing and all that stuff. So you can't really use the live sync all that much. Um, so yeah, I, I, the answer to me is just use both, right? I mean, if I guess if you have zero budget, then you, your only answer is Twin Motion because it's free. But uh, if you're saying I paid, you know, $500 a, month, a year last year for Twin Motion on top of $600 a year for Enscape, then you're not paying 500 anymore for twin motion so just use enscape too <laughs> yeah i can back it up from my firm's perspective too we we, we, are, we use both um and you know whilst we did look at twin motion and go hey we're technically already paying for it uh, may as well use it um we found that enscape is just it's a much easier tool for a designer in revit to just launch themselves into on the fly um and if you're regularly in revit anyway it makes more sense to try to you know, not have to do much rework every time you jump into an experience. Um, but I also agree with Jeff that, you know, once you do um, terrain, um, grass, things that, you know, yeah. uh, need a bit more detail and, you know, have some more assets in Twin Motion, that, that makes a huge difference um, for sure. But one really good thing about Enscape is they also support Rhino, um, which is mm. one thing that we found very useful. And whilst you can run Twin Motion and standalone and still get the, the information across, 
um, we found that the Brian users still really love it as well. So, yeah, I don't see it going away anytime soon, even if there are like, you know, free competitors out there technically. It's just that good of a, a product. Yeah, I think I think the 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 whole connection to the program is is the biggest benefit of Enscape. How it just it feels like it's it's part of you know Revit. Like it feels like I'm working in the same program. It's just another window within it, and that that's probably you know until until any of these other you know Twinmotion, Lumion, until any of them feel like that. I think it's always going to have a place in that process for sure. Yeah, I have tried uh, Twinmotion especially for some clients who were asking me, okay, is it worth it to, to pay for Enscape or should we use uh, Twinmotion since it's free now? Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that uh, like, it, I think the learning curve is a bit steeper than with Enscape. I think that's what I like about Enscape, how mm -hmm. you just open it and it most of right. the time it will already kind of look good. They don't have yeah. to go there and tweak this and tweak that. So that's what I like the most. But I think probably if you take the time to learn it more, you can get to uh, some feature you don't have access to uh, with Enscape. Yeah. Well, what, what's funny about it when I'm teaching when I'm teaching people either or, um, you know, with Enscape, it's it's usually if if you've ever made a rendering in Revit, if you ever hit the teapot before and made it and, and went through that process of making a native Red, Revit rendering in your history, um, then you can use Enscape because that's all you have to do, right? And so as much as that's a benefit, it's also like that also means you have to set up all your textures and materials in Revit, which some people may consider that not being a benefit, right? Because now you're dealing with the Revit material editor as far as textures, um, uh, 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 diffusion and, and, and bump maps and all that stuff. Whereas when I know I'm only using Twin Motion, I'm using Revit for basically shaded, I'm using shading on my materials with, you know, with whatever hatch patterns or surface patterns we need for the sake of graphics and even on the visuals. Um, and I'm not even touching the, the texture, the appearance tab. And to some extent, that's actually very nice because we all know that the appearance tab in Revit isn't the greatest place to be. <laughs> and so, especially when it comes to textured materials and so on and so forth. So by doing that, I, I'm bringing, you know, in, in, I'm just applying all my textures in the, the rendering program, which is twin motion in this case, and it's just a drag and drop. And, and then you're just dealing with sliders for, opacity, bump map, displacement, all these great things. And it's much smoother than dealing with custom textures and all that lovely stuff in Revit. It also, one one thing we found is sometimes Enscape projects, they might open model a little bit if you're not careful because they want to see all the grout lines and the tiles and they can't mm. make the texture that looks quite right or they don't know how. Um, or someone might go and create a 300,000 piece curtain wall system to do a little louver screen that completely blows up the views every time you see it. So like that, that is a nice thing about twin motion too, that it does sort of keep the, the rendering outside the BIM platform. Cause you know, Revit's ultimately a BIM platform, not really a rendering platform, but it's core. Um, yeah. so that, that's yeah, another thing you really have to be careful of using both. Yeah. yeah. And I, I also should mention that you can set up your textures in Revit and they do, they're getting better at bringing those into Twinmotion. So if you did spend the time to apply custom textures and, and materials in Revit, um, ever since they switched to the Datasmith exporter, um, a lot more of that stuff is coming over. Um, it's still, to my, in my opinion, it's you, you, I'm still replacing it with Twinmotion stuff because some of the properties and, and the, the realism of it may get lost in the sauce. But, um, you know, you can actually, you can do both. It's just, I'm... I just hate the appearance tab in Revit. I don't know. It's a long, <laughs> yeah. long history of, of custom material yeah, annoyance. It's, it's not good. Revit. 